Good morning. My name is Steve Thompson uh, from Christchurch Polytech here in New Zealand. Today we're looking at the graphical solution for the deflection of a stepped beam. So this involves using graphical integration to, or integration methods, but graphically, to find the deflection of a beam. First thing we need to do is to be able to draw the bending moment diagram and then draw what they call the M over EI diagram. Part of our integration method is to divide the moment by the EI value. It's a um, fairly constant term in all of the integration processes. So today we're looking at a stepped beam, this one here. One meter long, half a meter is 40 mils diameter, half a meter is 30 mils diameter with a central load of three kilonewtons. So my moment at the center, my moment at the center point here will be 1500 times the 500 millimeters. So force times distance, moment equals 1500 times 500, which is 750 times 10 to the 3 newton millimeters. I'm going to use E3 for exponent 3 as we work through these problems. My I values, I1, because it's round, pi d to the 4th over 64, which is pi 40 to the 4th over 64, which is 125.6 times 10 to the 3 millimeters to the 4th. I2 will be pi 30 to the 4th over 64, which is equal to 39.76 times 10 to the 3 millimeters to the fourth. <coughs> my bending moment diagram for my problem will look like this. Maximum bending moment will occur in the center, so bending moment will be 750 times 10 to the 3. Now what I need to do is draw my um, bending moment over EI diagram. So for here, I need to divide this side of the diagram by this I, EI value. And I need to divide this side of the diagram by this EI value. So this is a larger I value. So this side of the diagram will be smaller. So I should end up with a diagram which will look something like this. So this will be M over EI2 and this one will be M over EI1. So I'm dividing, I'm dividing this side by EI1 and I'm dividing this side by EI2. So this will be 750E3 divided by E, 200 times 10 to the 3, working in millimeter units, and 39.76E3, which will give me 94.3 times 10 to the minus 6. This side, same process, it'll be 750 times 10 to 3 divided by 200 to the 3 times EI1, which is 125.6 E3. That's going to give me 29.8 10 to the minus 6. Okay, now what I need to do is to draw this to scale and graphically integrate that. So to draw this to scale, I need to work out an appropriate scale for this. My maximum height of my diagram, we said back here, was 94.3 times 10 to the minus 6. And I typically want my diagrams to be about 50 millimeters high. So if I work on a 1 to 2 scale somewhere, so I want 
90 will be about this big on this scale here. So that's quite a good scale. So that will put me down about here for a base point. So if I draw my M over EI diagram, keeping it on the right hand side of my page, I need the beam to be one metre long. So I'll find a good scale for that. Here's a good scale. So if I make that one metre. So halfway along my beam will be here. So this is where we need to construct my M over EI diagram. We said I'm going to use a 2 to 1 scale. I want my height to be 94.3. So 80, 94 and a little bit. There's my top point. So this side of the diagram is that. And the other side had a height of 29, which is somewhere around there. So this is my M over EI diagram to scale. So this point is 94.3 three to the minus six and twenty nine point eight to the minus six. We'll use these numbers later when we have to work out scales. Okay, next part is I need to rule some lines down the page. So what we're gonna do is I'll just zoom out a little bit. What I'm gonna do is so now we need to draw some lines down the page. Um, you can't evenly space these, but I'm just going to randomly put some lines down the page. I want one at this step, and I'll put one at the far end. And let's just randomly go for a couple of spaces in here. Now these do not need to be uniformly spaced, obviously. I am just taking a guess. The more lines you put in, the more accurate you get the result. The less lines, the less accurate, but the faster the process becomes. So now we do the graphical integration process. So for this, we take a point just off to the side. Now this diagram is roughly 50 millimeters high, and I'm happy that the next diagram will be about 50 mils. So what I'll do is come off to this end, approximately the same height as my diagram. So this diagram is 50 high, I'll come off 50. If I came off a smaller distance, then my next diagram will be larger. If I come off a big distance, then my next diagram will get smaller. So you can change the scales. So I'm going to come off something like 50 millimeters off here and mark a point. I was going to call that P. And this is 50 millimeters off the side of my diagram and I'm interested in this line as well. So graphical integration is I take this block in between my two construction lines. I take the average height of this block, so I'm where about there. I then take that line height across to here. I then take the slope between this point and P then take the slope between that point and P, this slope through here, and I transfer that slope to across that same two construction lines in here. That's my graphical integration process. So average height of that block, take that across to the sideline, and then take that slope down to P across here. Next one, take the average height of this one across take that slope between that point and P and draw it across the next line. So I took that average height and drew it across this line. This one, repeat this process now for the rest of the diagram. And join them on to the end. Average height of this one, roughly, don't need to be hugely accurate because this is an approximate solution anyway because of the fact that we have taken fairly wide lines in order to do my integration process. 
one more to go. Average height. Cross to the side. Slope through there. Okay, this is my slope diagram. If you remember integration processes, I take my M over EI value. Um, something like Macaulay's, you would take your M over EI, you would integrate it to get the slope, you would then integrate it again to get deflection. So I have now integrated this diagram in order to get this one. I'm then going to integrate this one, slope diagram, in order to get a deflection diagram. Okay, for the graphical integration for the this one, I'm going to need a zero line. So what I want to do is put a line through my diagram at the point of zero slope, if I know where that is. In this case, I don't. So what we're going to do is guess at where the point of zero slope is. So I'm going to take a guess and say, oh, I think it's going to be, let's do it on here. I would say that this is fairly rigid. This will probably deflect sort of like this as a deflected shape. So I'm going to take a guess at somewhere around here. So here's a line on my page. I'm going to put a line through here. Now this is my guess at my zero line. Now we will come back and correct that guess later on. I'll show you how to do that at the end. So now we integrate this again. This diagram is only about 30 high. So I'm going to come off 30 millimeters and mark another point P out here. So I'm going to do my integration based on these points. So I made this 30 millimeters. So graphically integrate again um, to get my deflection diagram. So same process as before. Take my average heights. So Average, 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 average. Take my average height, slope down to P. Yeah, and draw it across that first line. Second one, average height. So let's just mark all of these. That one's there, there. There and there. This one, second one is there. Third one is this point, which is horizontal. And there. Fourth one will be this one. Fifth one will be that one. Oops. And my last one. Yeah, the end. Okay, that's my deflection diagram. So now what we need to do is to address the issue of where the zero lines are. What I do know about my beam is that this point has no deflection and this point has no deflection. So both ends have zero deflection. So this point and this point have no deflection. So a line between those will be a line which has no deflection. So that has no deflection, that has no deflection, and this is my deflected shape. If that's my zero line, that would also be my zero slope line. So no deflection, no deflection, that would have no slope. So what I can do is take this line and draw this line back up on there. So if we just take that line, and that'll give me my true zero. So if I mark that back through here to this point, and then horizontally through my diagram, then this line will be my true zero. So this is where my zero line should have been, 
had I put it in the correct place. Okay, so those are my slope diagram and my deflection diagram. Now I just need to work out some scales. So, scales, I'm going to have scale this way, we'll call that S vertical, scale vertical and scale horizontal for here. Oops. Scale is equal to actual over drawn. So, for my horizontal scale, it was actually 1000 millimeters long and I drew it 100 millimeters long so that will give me a horizontal scale equal to 10. My vertical scale, put this up here, SV is equal to actual overdrawn 94.3 to the minus 6 divided by, now we can put a ruler on here and go well that is 47 millimeters really it's a 1 to 2 scale so if you work that out then this point here will be 47.15 millimeters that's going to give me an SV which is 2 10 to the minus 6 as my scale okay so now for the slope diagram in fact both diagrams are the same for this scale the vertical sorry the horizontal scales remain the same all the way down my page so horizontal same same vertical scales vertical scale for this diagram we've just done vertical scale for this diagram or any diagram is I go back one diagram and do horizontal scale times vertical scale times the distance so when I'm doing this one I will go back one diagram horizontal scale times vertical scale times distance so we do the same for both diagrams so this is my slope diagram so we'll call this S theta is equal to go back one diagram horizontal times vertical times P so it'll be SH times SV times P which will be 10 times 2 times 10 to the minus 6 times 50 again I'm still working in millimeters so my S theta will come out with 1 times 10 to the minus 3 and obviously it's in radians because it's slope and it's per millimeter because I'm working in millimeter units. For my deflection diagram, um, SY, my, sc my scale for my deflection will be go back one diagram, horizontal times vertical times P. So horizontal, SH, times the vertical scale, which is S theta, times P. So 10 times 1 exponent minus 3 times 30 in this case gives me a scale of 0.3 and it will be millimeters per millimeter. Again, working in millimeter units. So maximum deflection. If we look at maximum deflection, Maximum deflection will occur when slope is zero. So slope is zero at this point here. So this is where my slope is zero. So this here is my position of maximum deflection is at that point. So I can work out exactly where that is. Value of maximum deflection all I can do is measure either this line or this line. Um, in the middle, it's I can get something close, but it's one of these will be the maximum. So if we take these, in fact, take this line here, that's my slope line. 
maximum is obviously going to be this one. So if we look at that, that will give me a deflection of around about 16 and a half millimeters. So Y maximum will be 16.5 millimeters times my scale and that will give me 16.5 times 0.3 4.95 millimeters. Okay, if I want to know slope, um, maximum slope will be either this end here or it will be this end here. So this end will be the largest. There's my true zero line. So I'm interested in this distance to there. So if I take that, which is around about 18 millimeters. So maximum slope, um, right hand side, it will be 18 millimeters times my scale one exponent minus three which will give me theta max is 18 exponent minus three radians and that's graphical integration